several distinguished and special guests up here on the day. So I'm going to speak very briefly to you here today. Let me just introduce them all briefly, very quickly. Of course, very well know our Chancellor Nicholas Depos who is here. Athletics Director Malcolm Turner. You know this guy. We'll hear from him again in a minute. And thrilled to have with us Governor Bill Lee is here today. And the mayor of the great city of Nashville, David Bryant. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. I stood up here in 2014 about this time, and I said, dreams do come true. Well, last night, as we watched the Commodores, a lot of people might consider that to be a dream, and in some ways it was, but I more considered it a coronation. Because I believe what we witnessed this year is not only the greatest baseball team in Vanderbilt history, but one of the greatest in college baseball history. I was thrilled that the Chancellor was able to move things around and be able to make his schedule available to come and be a part of this second national championship celebration. Please welcome our Chancellor, Nicholas Zeppos. Thank you, it's great to be here. Let me keep my remarks brief. Because I didn't throw a pitch, I didn't call a signal, I didn't catch a ball. But you fan base brought along these extraordinary Commodores, these student athletes, Tim Corbin, his staff, Maggie Corbin, we are all so proud of you. And I can't tell you how my text just lit up last night because of all of what you were doing. So congratulations to everyone for bringing this national championship. You brought an SEC championship, you brought a national championship, and most challenging was everyone was saying, yeah, you're the best team, you should do it. And under that pressure, under that spotlight, you all perform with poise, with integrity, with character, with sportsmanship, we call it the Vanderbilt way. You are a shining light. Anchor down. Anchor down. Congratulations. And let me turn this over to our wonderful mayor, David Bryan. David? Well, thank you, Chancellor. Let, let me start by saying that the partnership between Nashville and the Vanderbilt Commodores and the Vanderbilt University has never been stronger. Uh, and that's uh, in, in great part due to Chancellor Zeppos. And I, I just want to say thank you to you, Chancellor Zeppos, for everything you have done to build that partnership here in Nashville in the last, in the last years. Now, uh, we, we're missing one person today that I want to, because he's, a, he's a, an important, he was an important Nashvillian, that's David Williams. And so um, I just want to say uh, thank you to David Williams for everything he did for, for the city of Nashville. Now, I'm a, I'm a long-suffering Vandy fan in, in many ways. My grandfather brought me to every football game in the 70s. Uh, and so um, I've been a Vandy fan for uh, as long as I can possibly remember. And today, as we welcome back the national champions from Omaha, I just want to say, Vandy boys, you made us proud. We love you, and we look forward to more successes in the future. Thank you very much. Thanks for being part of Nashville. Thanks for making us proud. Thanks, Corbin. Thanks for doing it the right way. Thank you, Mary, and it was great to be able to hear the pedestrian bridge in downtown Nashville was lit up in Commodore colors last night. That was, uh, that was terrific to hear. 
Well, we are really thrilled to be able to introduce and bring to the microphone for a few comments now the governor of the state of Tennessee, Governor Bill Lee. Anchor down, boys. We are proud of you. Everybody in the state of Tennessee is proud of you. And we're very, very grateful for actually for the honor that you bring to this state. Thank you for all of y'all for being great fans, for loving them. As a kid who grew up in this community, his mom and dad both went to Vanderbilt, and, uh, went through many, many years hoping for national championships. This is a really good day. Thank y'all. And you know what, let me just say, the people of Tennessee are we're not just proud because you're the best baseball team in the country, but we're proud because of the way that you did it. Yeah. We're proud because of the, the inspiration that you men gave to our community. Whether whether it's you, Tyler Brown, and you're uh, showing the world how to overcome adversity and how to, yeah. to me and to, and to many others that you don't even know, uh, the way that you men honored your uh, your teammate, Donnie Everett, through this process. We remember him today. And, and we thank you for the way you did that. And Coach Morgan, you have uh, been a strong leader who has been an inspiration not only to these young men but to this entire community. So we are all very grateful, really grateful that y'all are the best baseball team in all of America, but are grateful, grateful for much more than that. Thank you very, very much. When this year began, you heard Tim Corbin talk about it some. There were some guys that were going to have to step up and fill some roles. There was some uncertainty here and there. Didn't quite know exactly what the final result was going to be. But flashback to getting off to that good start out on the West Coast and playing some quality baseball right off the bat. And then watching this team gel and watching this team grow uh, and get better as every week went along was something special. Uh, there weren't a whole lot of disappointments along the way. You know, a series early on in conference play, there was a disappointment, but the team showed, I think one of the great characteristics they had was the ability to never let one mistake or one error turn into two. Always ready to keep things focused on the moment. And about the middle of this year, I remember starting to get questions, I know Coach Portman did too, from people who started to say, is this the best baseball team you've ever had? Well, hard to say that at the middle of a year. There's a lot left to do. But then you start thinking, okay, if they're going to be the best, then they're just going to have to clear one hurdle after another. And so, win the regular season championship, leap a hurdle. Win the SEC tournament, leap a hurdle. First team in the history of the conference since the expansion to beat every other team in the conference in the same year. Be good enough to be ranked number two national seed for the NCAA tournament, which meant once again, the ability to host over here in Hawkins Field to roll through the National Regional, and then set up the Super Regional with a little bit of drama, but found a way to clear that hurdle convincingly and leap back into Omaha for the fourth time. And this time, is the third time making it to the National Finals game and getting it done on that final day by a score of eight to two, to beat the Michigan Wolverines and give us our second 
national championship. We will take a look at the board above us. Maybe a couple of highlights to remind you of what this special year was all about. out for a long time. There's a lot of highlights there. Well, I noticed I'm really pleased to introduce our next speaker and, and director. I know there's some renovations going on in areas in Magoogan. I hope that includes uh, increased trophy case area because we keep bringing them home. Please welcome our athletics director, Malcolm Turner. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of you being here today to celebrate another Vanderbilt National Championship. Woo! To Coach Corbin and this group of extraordinarily talented student athletes, you honor us in the way that you represent this university in such fine form and fashion. I know I speak on behalf of everyone here and tens of thousands of Vanderbilt fans and alumni around the country and around the world. Thank you so much for how you represent this fine university. And to the young men on the team, we are immensely proud of each and every one of you. Your names will be etched in stone forever as Vanderbilt legend. But I know it hasn't come easy. I know how much work you put into your studies, how much work you put into your training, and the long grind of the baseball season and the loss of a beloved friend and teammate in Donnie Evans. And it's also obvious watching this team what a special group that you really are. How much you enjoy the process, how much you enjoy each other, the dissatisfaction you take in playing this game at the highest level, and the pride you take in wearing the black and gold. And you've met every challenge. As the Chancellor noted, and Joe as well in the video reference, you won the SEC regular season championship, you won the SEC Tournament Championship. You won the Regional at Hawkins Field, the Super Regional at Hawkins Field. And in Omaha, you showed the world that there's no better coach than Tim Corbin and no better baseball program in this country than Vandy Boy. So 
this is a great feeling for everyone to celebrate this national championship and to pay tribute to an incredibly group of talented young men. To see a coaching staff that sweats every detail, see their hard work pay off, and to admire our dedicated Vanderbilt fans who filled the stands in Omaha, filled Hawkins for the watch parties, and really spread the Vanderbilt love on social media. Together, these student athletes, our coaches, our staff, and our alumni and fans, we made a powerful statement about Vanderbilt, and I could not be prouder of Commodore Nation. But I think it's time we heard from head coach Tim Corbin, and our national champion, Vandy Boy. Coach. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much for being here today. We appreciate it. I'd like to thank the governor for being here first off, making time to get over here and celebrate you and celebrate our, our players and coaching staff. I'd like to thank Mayor Browley. He lit up the city last night in black and gold. He made this a Vanderbilt city. We're certainly appreciative of that. <laughs> certainly want to thank the chancellor and our athletic director, Malcolm Turner. And I think sometimes through all of this, there's one guy that stays constant too, and that's the voice behind the mic of every game that's on the radio. That's our guy back here, that's Joe Fisher. Where do you start? It's, it's tough to put these things in words, and I'm not gonna tell you I have the words for you right now. I get the question all the time, especially from media folks recently, is at what point did you think this team had a chance to be something special? I guess it's easy to talk about that now, but going back to December when we were done with the winter term, Maggie and I went back to Boston and spent Christmas there, and right before Christmas, I always get the grades on how we did during the course of the fall. When I got the grades this year, they're very complimentary, and they were very good for a lot of different reasons. But at that point, once I received those grades, I started thinking about the fall. And I compared it to all of the falls that we had prior to this year. And I thought to myself, there was no drama, there was consistency, there were great actions, they were modeling the behaviors that you would all want represented in your own family. And I thought to myself, with that consistent behavior right now, we have a chance if we continue to do a lot of great things. Whether we can win a national championship, I'm not sure. Whether we can win an SEC championship, I'm not sure. But as Joe gets up here and talks about all the accomplishments of this group and this staff, they check every single box. Every single box. But I'm not proud enough to come up with a, another word outside of consistency and maturity. And that's what it was. I look at the top. I look at the staff. And underneath the staff sits seven seniors. Seven seniors in 2016 who probably had the toughest time of their lives, losing a teammate. And then four years later, to come back to school, to finish their degree, and to be the leaders of a program, and to be the modelers of a program, and go from devastation to celebration, and come full circle inside of an athletic and student program, I give them tons of credit, and give this great group to all the credit in the world for bringing home this second national championship. Whether they're Vanderbilt's best team really doesn't matter. What we told them at the beginning is they're going to write their own chapter. And their own chapter is all that matters. Because inside that chapter, it's chapter 17 and just fits in with all the other 16 teams we've had at Vanderbilt. But you know what? If we didn't have 2003, that moment was worth Scott, we wouldn't have 2004. If we didn't have 2004, we may never have got David Price, Ryan Flaherty, Pedro Alvarez. We don't get 2007. If we don't get 2007, we don't get 2010 when we went to our first Super Regional. 
If we don't get 2010, we don't go 2011, we went to the College World Series for the first time. If we don't get 2011, we don't have that super year in 2013. And then we don't win our first national championship in 2014. And then we don't become the runner-up in 15. And maybe with a situation that we had in 16, it calloused our brains enough and gave us the mental toughness to get to this point right now in 2019. My point is this, every year is connected to another one. That's why they're called Vandy Boys. You played here, and once you play here, you stay here as a Vandy Boy. We're just another chapter of this fine group of collection of baseball players. On behalf of the coaches, on behalf of the staff, on behalf of my wife, on behalf of these players, I want to thank you all out here in front of us for coming here today, for spending money to go to Omaha and taking time away from your family, and then for spending time out at Hawkins Field, at our football stadium, our basketball arena, just for supporting Vanderbilt University. We're the finest university in this country, and we're certainly glad we can be the best in both worlds. The best academically, and on this day, the best athletically as well. Thank you very much for coming. opportunity here from a couple of student athletes that makes sense to bring a couple of seniors up to say a few words. First, let's bring up our shortstop who hit what arguably is one of the biggest hits in the World Series and that come from behind win over Louisville. Please welcome Ethan Paul. this moment and this accomplishment that we've had so far. I think that this season, over the course of the four years I've been here, this season has meant so much more to me and for the team just because of how much we've invested in this group. I think that when you look at this team, you look at the seven seniors, you look at the talent, you look at the guys that have been all over the country and have come here to represent Vanderbilt, but I can't think of a better way for this season to end than to finish as national champions. Thank you. This group is so special for so many reasons. I could go on and on about each guy, each reason that they, each thing that they brought to the team. But I'll keep it short and I'll wrap up with this. I think that the reason that this team has made it to this point is not because of the talent, not because of the baseball skill, not because of even all of the reps and their training sessions and stuff like that, but it's just the guys, it's the, it's the character of each one of them and how they've represented Vanderbilt and how they've come together and made this university and this program proud. Thank you very much, thank you again. And I also want to bring up a guy that I think may have had part of the duties of guarding the national championship trophy on the way home. Um, I believe he had it strapped into the seat next to him on the plane, so we felt totally comfortable with that. I think as many players as we've loved throughout the years in this Vanderbilt program, this guy is right at the top of the list among the most beloved, I think, that have ever come through here. Our first baseman, Julian Infante.
No, we didn't forget that. Hey guys, again, just want to say thank you. Um, we can never thank you guys enough. And uh, there's many people to thank, and I wish we could thank everybody here, but we're just, we're just extremely grateful. On behalf of the team, more specifically, first of all, we want to thank professors here. And um, it hasn't been easy for, for a lot of us. And going through this, we've gone through it, and um, we've gotten a lot of great help, a lot of extra hours after class. And um, we just really appreciate that. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Second of all, we want to thank the fans. We want to thank the fans who have traveled, who have gone through 40 degree weather, who have gone through 100 degree weather, and have gone extremely long distances just for us. And uh, we're extremely grateful and we wouldn't be here without your support. And third of all, we want to thank this coaching staff. The amount of hours that Coach Corbin, Coach Baxter, Coach Macias, and so many others spend at the field away from their families. It's, um, it's unbelievable. And we wouldn't be the players we are without them. We're extremely grateful. And guys, we just want to say thank you again one last time. It's been a true honor speaking from everyone on this team. It's been an honor to be a Vanderbilt Commodore. It's been a privilege to be here for four years at Best University. We're extremely grateful and uh, we're national champions. Thank you guys. I think one more thing left to do is just give the Vandy boys, our national champions, one big final round of applause. Thank you so much for being here all the way along. And I'll be watching.